Hi and welcome to my guide. Today we're going to be completing the Varrock Heart Diary. Quest requirements are This is a Treasure, Demon Slayer, Rune Mysteries, Shield of Araf, A Tale of Two Cats, Hazil Cult, In Aid of the Merrick, Making History, Merlin's Crystal, Observatory, Grand Tree, What Lies Below, and the mini quest Curse of the Empty Lord. Skill requirements are 50 Construction, 51 Agility, 52 Prayer, 54 Magic, 60 Woodcutting, 60 Fire Making, 66 Hunter, and 68 Farming. All of the stats can be boosted except for Construction, Prayer, and Hunter. I just needed R2 Dashing Cabot first, 30,800 GP, any axe that you can use, 2 law runes, 1 air and 1 fire rune. You'll also need to be on the ancient spellbook, a skull scepter, and if you do not have that then you will need to have some food, armor, weapon and potions to get it. You will need to kill a lot of monsters between combat 27 and 82. Next, what you also need is a tinderbox, a used sapling and a spade. For the recommended items is as always some weight reducing armor and one stamina potion should be enough. And that is also very helpful is 10 cactus spines because we do not want our used sapling to die. Next for the teleports is just simply one to Edgeville and one to Varrock while you're still on the ancient spellbook. So first, where I want to complete my first task is here at the tree patch of Varrock, here at Varrock's castle. What you need to do is just plant your you sapling and then pay Tresnor 10 cactus pines to be able to protect it so your yew tree will not die from disease. Next, let's enter the Varrock palace and let's go upstairs. Next, go north and you will see a uh, altar sign on your minimap. Go there while you activate uh, the smite prayer to reduce some prayer points and while this is activated pray at the altar and we'll have completed task number one. Next let's go downstairs back south the southern stairs because now we will need to go to the church. So let's exit the castle east and just east of the castle there you'll find a church and in front of the church there you'll find a rare tree sign. This is a yew tree. Let's chop one log. Once you have one lock, let's go enter the church and in the northeastern corner there you'll find a staircase. Let's climb up to the top floor. Once you're here, use your tinderbox on the U locks and this will complete task number two. Let's go back downstairs and let's go to the estate agent, which is just across the street. Alright, here at the estate agent, let's talk to him. Select the second option, can you redecorate my house? Then we'll need to select the fifth option and then select the second option, fancy stone. Now if your house is already in fancy stone, then you'll need to talk to him again. And then select the first option, basic wood. Next, talk to him again. And then once again, uh, select the fifth option and the second option, fancy stone. This should cost you then another 25,000 GP and then this will be task number three completed. All right, once you've done that, let's go south. And now we're going to the Hunter Clothing Shop, which is in the restricted area uh, southeast of the rock, just like in the Biohazard quest and in the Family Crest quest. So just go southeast of the eastern bank and then you're already there. Be sure that you have your dashing gabbit fur, two of them, 800 GP and 66 hunter. Let's enter the uh, hunter clothing shop just like in the Eagle's Peak quest and let's talk to the fancy dress shop owner. 
Key press in the spacebar and select the fourth option. Could you make anything from these furs I got from Hunter? Right click on the Dashing Cabot's cape and uh, buy one. Okay, close the interface and this should complete the fourth task. Next, let's go to our ancient spellbook and do the Padawa teleport. This will get you to the Edgeville dungeon. Next, let's run north. And this should also complete task number five. Now we'll need to go to the Vanaka Slayer Master. And next to the Slayer Master, just south of him, there you should find a shortcut sign. Let's go towards that shortcut sign and use it. Squeeze through the obstacle pipe and make your way to the Moss Giants. Next, teleport or run back to Edgeville. And now, let's go to the bank. Now it is time to prepare various monsters between combat 12 and 82. Or just take out your Skull Scepter. But if you do not have that item, then you will need to grab and prepare to fight all those monsters between 12 and combat 82. Okay, so what I am currently wielding is... Uh, a best DPS weapon which is the toxic blowpipe, some ranged gear and then I'm not going to take my full graceful. Also bring along a axe, your Varak teleport and then maybe also some food uh, depending if you need them or not. I also don't think I will be needing my stamina potion so I'm also going to depositing that. And besides from that, I think I will be ready, so let's go to the Grand Exchange. And next to the bridge, next to the shortcut to the Grand Exchange, there we will find a transportation sign. This is where you can uh, make a canoe. So chop down the canoe station. Next, shape the canoe. Then select the Waka canoe. And this will complete task number 7. Let's float the canoe. Then paddle canoe. And select Barbarian Village. Alright, once you're here, let's go enter the Barbarian Village and enter the security dungeon. In that dungeon, we will need to kill one specific monster on every floor. On the first floor, in the Vault of War, we will need to kill Minotaurs. Doesn't matter which combat level, 27 or 12. Uh, we just need to kill it for a uh, right skull half. On the second floor, in the Catacomb of Famine, we will need to kill Flesh Crawlers for the bottom of the Scepter. On the third floor, the Pit of Pestilence, we will need to kill Cattle Pulpons for the top of the Scepter. And on the fourth floor, in the Sepulchre of Death, we will need to kill Ankus for the left Skull Half. All of these monsters have the same drop rate of dropping that specific item and with every kill you have a 3% chance of receiving this item that you need. Once you have all these 4 items we just need to combine them to get the Skull Scepter. Once you have it, teleport with it and you will have completed task number 8. Yes! Got it! Yes! Right, after you've used the top with the bottom and then you've used the right half with the left half, use a strange skull on the ruined scepter to make a skull scepter. Right click, invoke, teleport, and yes, task number 8 is completed. Now for the pretty much the final one. Let's go to Varak. Let's go to the bank and deposit all this heavy stuff. 
Um, I'm just going to be bringing along my graceful. So with my graceful, let's go now to uh, the Varak Museum and there we will need to complete our final task. If you ignore the task that we will need to dig up a yew tree and get to yew uh, roots. Besides from that task, we will need to wait for our yew tree to be fully grown before we are able to do that task. So technically this should be our second to last task. In the Varak Museum, we will need to have 153 kudos, and that is pretty much the main task. So with all those quests done that I've set at the start of the quest, let's first go to the second floor and talk to Historian Minas, just next to the stairs. Select the second option, I have some information about your displays. And after you've completed all those quests, just keep pressing the spacebar and I will see your counter of kudos going up. So this is all the kudos that you can get on the second and third floor. Next, let's go to the basement. In here are 10 displays with animals inside of them. And in front of those displays, there is a button and a plaque or plaque. You will need to go to all 10 of the displays plug and then you will need to answer three questions correctly which are random for everyone and once you've answered three questions of all 10 displays correctly then return to Orlando Smith and he will give you uh, 1000 experience in Hunter and Slayer as well as 28 kudos. Afterwards the only way to get more kudos is by going to the main floor and next to the museum guard let's open the gate yes let me go in and just like in the varak medium diary let's go to the southern wall and take the tools let's take everything second option third option fifth option and then the final option the fifth one Okay, be sure to wield your gloves and your boots. So, what we basically need to do right now is exactly the same that we did before for the Varak Medium Diary. So first, take a specimen from the specimen rocks, then use it on one of the empty tables, and then just drop everything that you get from it, except that there are five useful items that you do not need to drop. These items are pottery, an old symbol, an old coin, an ancient symbol and an ancient coin. Besides from those five items, drop everything and just keep repeating the process until you have one of those five items. Once you have one of those, use it on one of the working archaeologists and read what he says. He will say in which number of display you will need to put the uh, item in. So after he has told you that, open the gate and then search the displays with a white paper inside to look for which uh, display number it has. Then use the item that you've gotten on the correct display. You will get 10 kudos, repeat until you have put all the 5 useful items in the 5 empty displays. So once again, it is pottery, an old symbol, an old coin an ancient symbol and an ancient coin. So 5 times 10, that will be 50 more kudos. And then you should be 5 kudos short for 153. Oh my god, yes I got it! Now this should get me another 10 kudos, so I still am 5 short for some reason. Now I've been thinking what this could be, and I think I need to show the book uh, to Minas the, of the uh, Dagon High history. So let's go to the Varak Museum, grab that book real quick, then return to the uh, museum and give it to Minas.
Right, Minas, do you need this book? Yes! Okay, he needed the book from the library. Nice! 153 kudos. Uh, right now, the only thing we need to do is talk to the information clerk here next to the door. And then we will get a couple of experience. Nice. Right, let's now go downstairs and complete this task by talking to Orlando Smith. And you've completed your final task. Now, the only thing we need to do is wait for our yew tree to be fully grown. So we can chop it down and then dig it from the tree patch and get at least two yew roots, which requires 68 farming. All right, awesome. The yew tree has been fully grown. Let's check its health and chop it down. A dragon axe special might be nice. All right, get ready with your spades to dig up the yew uh, tree roots. All right, dig up the yew tree stump to get at least two yew roots. When you have at least two digged up, you will have completed your final Varak Heart Diary task. Now we just need to return to Toby to claim our reward. He's just located behind the general store. After you've spoken to him, he will give you Varak Armor number three, as well as one experience lamp, which grants 15,000 experience in any skill above level 50. You can now buy 60 discounted battle staves per day from Zaf's barrel. You now also have access to the cooking guild's bank and the Varak armor, when it is worn, it gives you a 10% chance of mining two ores up to adamant. Alright, this was my guide how to complete the Varak Heart Diary. Hopefully it helped. Subscribe, rate and comment. Okay, thanks, bye.